Good morning, folks, and welcome to Clinton United Church. I'm Reverend Kathy. It's Pentecost Sunday, so welcome to Pentecost, the very end of the Easter season. We have a few announcements before we get started today. One is that, yes, we are having our virtual fellowship time on Sunday mornings from 1030 until noon. So please join us, and uh, if you don't have the link, get in contact with me, and I'd be happy to send it to you. We are still doing our singing on Thursdays. There's a new YouTube video available every Thursday night, and the old ones are still available as well. So come on and join us virtually on uh, the YouTube link and sing loud and proud by yourself in your home. We have some meetings upcoming. The official board meets this coming Wednesday, and then the next week we have on the Tuesday the outreach meeting and on the Wednesday the worship and music. Please contact your board chair or your committee chair if you're not certain how those meetings are taking place. They are taking place virtually, either on Zoom or on by uh, teleconference. So if you're not sure which it is or you don't have the links for them, contact your chair or the office and we will help you out. Stuff the Truck is happening on May 29th, that is this coming Saturday, uh, from 9 until noon. Come and see how full we can get a truck of items for the food bank. This is open to anyone in the community, so tell, tell your friends and your family, come on out, you drive in, we take the food away, and you drive out again. We will take a picture when it's over just to let you know how full we got it. But uh, yeah, very safe, contactless, just show up. Another thing for you to know is that if you are a person from the church who had your picture taken for the directory, the directories are in! Yay! So if you had your picture taken or submitted a picture for the directory, then if you come to the, uh, to the Stuff the Truck event, we will give it to you then, or you can drop by the office at some point. But that would be the most convenient because we can give it to you outside. So. Uh, Come on and get your directory if you're supposed to have one. Were there any other announcements? Oh, yeah, folks. I'm having communion this week. So if you don't have your communion elements ready, then now would be a good time to push pause on your television, uh, computer, phone, however you're watching this, just push pause and go get yourself some juice and crackers or coffee and donuts or however you're doing your, 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 your communion. So please push pause, go and get it, and then be sure and come back. But we will be having communion today. Were there any other announcements? Nope. Okay. Lord, we give you thanks for light, the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, coming into our lives. Enlighten and illumine us that we may worship you this day in spirit and in truth. Amen. Our first hymn is, As Comes the Breath of Spring.
Our first reading today is from the book of Ezekiel, chapter 37, the valley of the dry bones. God grabbed me. God's spirit took me up and set me down in the middle of an open plain strewn with bones. He led me around and among them, a lot of bones. There were bones all over the plain, dry bones bleached by the sun. He said to me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, Master God, only you know that. He said to me, prophesy over these bones. Dry bones listen to the message of God. And God the Master told the dry bones, watch this. I'm bringing the breath of life to you, and you'll come to life. I'll attach sinews to you, put meat on your bones, cover you with skin, and breathe life into you. You'll come alive and you'll realize that I am God. I prophesied just as I had been commanded. As I prophesied, there was a sound and oh, rustling. The bones moved and came together bone to bone. I kept watching, sinews formed, then muscles on the bones, then the skin stretched over them, but they had no breath in them. He said to me, prophesy to the breath, Prophesy, son of man, tell the breath, God the master says, come from the four winds, come breathe, breathe on these slain bodies, breathe life. So I prophesied, just as he commanded me, and the breath entered them and they came alive. They stood up on their feet, a huge army. And God said to me, son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Listen to what they're saying. Our bones are dried up, our hope is gone, there's nothing left of us. Therefore, prophesy. Tell them, God the Master says, I'll dig up your graves and bring you out alive, O my people. Then I'll take you straight to the land of Israel. And when I dig up graves and bring you out as my people, you will realize that I am God. I'll breathe my life into you and you'll live. And I'll lead you straight back to your land and you'll realize I am God. I've said it and I'll do it. Now we're going to go to Psalm 104. O God, how manifold are your works. With wisdom at your side, we make them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Hallelujah, hallelujah, There lies the great and mighty sea, teeming with living things, both great and small. Upon it sail the ships, and, and there, there is Leviathan, the monster you made to play in it. All these look to you, to give them their food in due season. What, what you gave them, you gather up. When you open your hand, you fill them with good things. But when you hide your face, they despair. When you take away their breath, they die and return to dust. But, but when, when you send out your spirit, they live, live again, and you renew the face of the earth. May your glory, O God, endure forever. May you rejoice, O God, in your works. When you look at the earth, it trembles. When you touch the mountains, they smoke. I will sing to God as long as I live. I will, I will praise, praise my God while I have been. I'm reading from the Gospel of John. I'm doing this in a slightly different order because, well, I want to finish up with the Acts passage because it's Pentecost. 
Jesus says, I didn't tell you this earlier because I was with you every day, but now I'm on my way to the one who sent me. Not one of you has asked, where you, are you going? Instead, the longer I've talked, the sadder you've become. So let me say it again, this truth. It's better for you that I leave. If I don't leave, the friend won't come. But if I go, I'll send him to you. And when he comes, he'll expose the error of the godless world's view of sin, righteousness, and judgment. He'll show them that their refusal to believe in me is their basic sin, that righteousness comes from above, where I am with the Father out of their sight and control, and that judgment takes place as the ruler of this godless world is brought to trial and convicted. I still have many things to tell you, but you can't handle them now. But when the friend comes, the spirit of the truth, he'll take you by the hand and guide you into all the truth that there is. He won't draw attention to himself, but will make sense out of what is about to happen and indeed out of all that I have done and said. He will honor me. He will take from me and deliver it to you. Everything the Father has is also mine. That's why I've said he takes from me and delivers to you. And finally, reading from the Acts passage, Acts chapter 2, the story of Pentecost. So when the feast of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Without warning, there was a sound like a strong wind, gale force. No one could tell where it came from. It filled the whole being, the whole building. And then like a wildfire, the Holy Spirit spread through their ranks, and they started speaking in a number of different languages as the Spirit prompted them. There were many Jews staying in Jerusalem just then, devout pilgrims from all over the world. When they heard the sound, they came on the run. Then when they heard one after another their own mother tongues being spoken, they were blown away. They couldn't for the life of them figure out what was going on and kept saying, aren't these all Galileans? How come we're hearing them talk in our various mother tongues? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, visitors from Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, immigrants from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, even Cretans and Arabs. They're speaking our languages, describing God's mighty works. Their heads were spinning. They couldn't make head or tail of any of it. They talked back and forth, confused. What's going on here? Others joked, they're just drunk on cheap wine. That's when Peter stood up and backed by the other 11 spoke out with bold urgency. Fellow Jews, all of you who are visiting Jerusalem, listen carefully and get this story straight. These people aren't drunk as some of you suspect. They haven't had time to get drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. This is what the prophet Joel announced would happen. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on every kind of people. Your sons will prophesy, also your daughters. Your young men will see visions, your old men dream dreams. When the time comes, I'll pour out my spirit on those who serve me, men and women both, and they'll prophesy. I'll set wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billowing smoke, the sun turning black and the moon blood red before the day of the Lord arrives, the day tremendous and marvelous. And whoever calls out for help to me, God, will be saved. May God bless these readings to our hearing, and to his name be all the praise and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to sing now. She comes sailing on the wind. <clears throat>
May the words of my mouth and the med meditations of all of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Yep, it's Pentecost. Pentecost meaning, well, everybody knows about pentagrams and stuff. That's five. Well, that's the remember. Fifty. Fifty days since we last had Easter. Fifty days of Jesus being among them. Forty days in, we had ascension, which is what we talked about last week. And now we have Pentecost. The first reading that we have for this week, sometimes, sometimes other times, but this week... Every meeting that I went to, they wanted to talk about Ezekiel's dry bones. So I finally said, yep, that's what I'm talking about this Sunday. Ezekiel and the valley of the dry bones. God takes Ezekiel, sets him in the middle of this valley of very dead creatures, and says, can they be alive? And he says, you got me, God. That's up to you. But he prophesied, and the bones started to come together. Reminds me of that old gospel song. You all know that one? <laughs> them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Oh, yeah, they all reconnected. One of the questions that we were asking ourselves this week as we were looking at this passage is, where are you? Where are you in this passage? Are you the dry bones? You feeling kind of dried and wizened up? Maybe a little bit with all this darn COVID stuff. Are you where the bones are just starting to wrestle a little bit? They're just starting to move a little bit. Is that where you're at? You've been kind of dried and wizened up and now you're maybe twitching a little? Maybe, maybe you, you're starting to pull everything together again. All the bits of yourself that have been scattered all through COVID and off over there someplace. Maybe you're just starting to feel like you're reconnecting again or getting ready to reconnect again. Are you all reconnected? You're all put together? But maybe you're still missing the spirit. Yeah, that could happen. We've all got it together. We've all reconnected with all of our stray bits, but maybe we're just not feeling alive yet. That sense of spirit, the spirit that comes and blows wherever it will, the spirit that comes and brings new life to that valley of dry bones again. It has been a long time, a year and a half, and we'll at least we'll be at at least a year and a half before we get out of this thing. We know that. But we're most of the way. It's been a hard time not being with friends and family, not feeling as connected with things. And yet, there is promise. There is the promise that as God's Spirit comes, the dry bones will live again. Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life and you will know that I am the Lord. I am God. That's what God says to us. God can make these dry bones live. God can bring back all the, the, the things around us that feel disconnected and feel like we've just been marking time. There's a new word out there, languishing. Languishing means you're just kind of doing. People ask, how are you doing? You say, doing. That's about it. I'm just getting from day to day. This is the promise of the life, of the spirit that comes again, that will bring back new life to us. Some of us have been feeling kind of like this poor thing. Yeah? Maybe at your house you're feeling a little bit dried and wizened up. You can look like this again. Maybe even with a nice bright blue base on you. You can look like this again with the, with the life coming back and the life coming back into God's world, into God's church. We can come back. We can be what we have be, been before. We just got to trust that if we wait a little bit longer, do what we're supposed to do, that God will come back. God never left. Just we're feeling a little out of touch with spirit right now. And maybe this time is when God's going to come back with God's spirit into our lives. For the spirit of truth has come. That's what Jesus promised. The spirit, the spirit of truth has come. It's not that it wasn't there because we've got all this nice stuff that the spirit moved upon the face of the deep before creation began. 
Spirit's always been here, never left. But sometimes we're more aware of it than others. Sometimes we're just so wrapped up in what's going on in our own lives, so wrapped up in all the, the bad news that we get from the news and every day sometimes we're lucky and we get some good news stories. But we get so wrapped up in our lives that we forget to look around and see that the Spirit of God is moving on the face of the deep, that the Spirit of truth has come, that God's Spirit is present in this, our world. And then on the day of Pentecost, just as they thought, okay, day number 10, tick it off. God, Jesus said to stay. He said, don't go anywhere. And every day we tick off another day. Every day we sit here and we wait, and all of a sudden the sound of a mighty wind, sound like an earthquake, and the tongues of fire comes down on all of them. And they get the gifts that they need for that time and for that place. The biggest gifts they needed right then was they were a bunch of Galileans. They'd never gone anywhere. They spoke their own native tongue. They might have a little bit of Greek. They might have a little bit of Latin. But mostly they were speaking Aramaic. And God wants them to go all over the world and talk to everybody. Well, the first thing they're going to need is a good translator. And that's what God gave them. The gifts that they needed for that time and that place. What do you think the gifts are that we need now? What are the gifts that we need in this time and place? We don't plan on spending, sending people to the ends of the earth from here. So what gifts does God need to give God's church here? The gifts that we need from God's Holy Spirit here in this time and in this place. The gifts needed to equip this church and the churches around us and all the united churches and all the churches around the world. What do we need right now? What does God's Spirit need to give to us? And then you watch for it and you fan the flames when you see it and you will build to a roaring fire as God becomes present in this God's world again. This is the day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost has come with God's Spirit coming to each of us with the gifts that God knows we need for our lives. Thanks be to God. God has given us many, many gifts, all of them. God gives us gifts that we might share them with others. The gifts are not for the building up of the individual, though that does happen. The gifts are for the building up of the entire church. So it is that we give of our gifts so that others may be able to see that God is present in this place. Now we get to listen to Louise sharing her gifts.
Lord, we give you thanks for the many gifts that you have given to us. Grant that these gifts that we return to you may, along with our very selves, be used to further your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now we're going to sing Spirit of the Living God. Let us pray. Lord, at this day of Pentecost, the day when you give of yourself by your spirit to your people and to your church, we thank you for that gift, that gift of spirit that connects us both to you and to one another. You come to explain to us all that Jesus has taught, to continue that connection that the disciples had and now we also have through you, that fountain bubbling up in the middle of our hearts, giving us the fresh water we need, helping us to be connected from our spirit to yours. You also come to us to bring us comfort, for you are known also as the comforter. You come to give us strength as we move through these strange times. You help us to figure out how you call us to live in a strange land. How you call us to be the church, to be the people that you call us to be. Because you've got this picture in your mind's eye of how each and every one of us can be. And Lord knows we don't always quite make it, but you keep holding it up in front of us and encouraging us to keep trying to be and to become your faithful people. Lord, there's a lot of people in this world who are hurting. Lord, thank you that there is, at least when I left the house, a ceasefire in Palestine and Israel. Pray that it holds at least until these good people can see the video we're creating. We pray for the people around the world who are suffering with COVID. Some we hear about, and there's an awful lot more that we don't. There's parts of the world we just don't usually spend any time hearing about. And now, well, we're not hearing anything about their struggle with COVID. But Lord, help us to be generous people, willing to make sure that all around the world, people get their COVID shots. 
Yes, we need to get it done here. Yes, we want to hit our benchmarks so we can get opening up. But there are some places in this world, they are so sick, Lord. And you know. You know. Help us not to forget our brothers and sisters just because we can't see them on the news. Lord, be with us. Help us to be and become what you call us to be each and every day. Amen. We're going to sing the first part of our communion hymn. We're going to do the first three verses of Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. We'll do the last one following communion. I invite all who are at peace with God and with their neighbor to come to this place. This is not our table, it is the table of the Lord, and all who profess him as Savior and Lord are welcome here. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to God. God. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is right to give God thanks and praise. In the beginning, the Spirit moved on the face of the deep. The breath of God breathed God's Spirit, God's life, into all living things. Thanks be to God. You sent your Spirit to enliven and to inspire your prophets, and they shared your guidance and your love with your people. Thanks be to God. You sent your Spirit to Jesus as he came to the Jordan River. There, baptized by water and the Spirit, he began his earthly ministry. Thanks, Thanks be to God. He instituted a new celebration, a meal with his disciples and now with us. A meal based on the Passover feast, but now with Jesus and with the Spirit. He took the ordinary things of life, the bread and, and the cup, that they had every day, and he made them special, saying that he was the bread and his blood was in the cup. Every time that they ate and drank, whether they were alone or with friends, if they remembered Jesus, he would be with them. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, and might heaven, heaven and earth, earth are full of your Lord. glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. After Jesus had been betrayed and was killed, you raised him up once again. And so we celebrate and praise you, proclaiming the mystery of our faith, saying, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Jesus continued to appear and to teach until he ascended into heaven after 40 days. On Pentecost, your Holy Spirit descended on the disciples as they waited in Jerusalem, as you had commanded. The, the Spirit came as tongues of fire with the sound of a rushing wind. The gifts of your Spirit were given to each as needed to create your church. Thanks, thanks be to God. God. So we give you thanks for what you have done, and we pray that you send your Spirit on us today. Equip and empower us to do your will. Help us to be and to become your church here. Your hands and feet, your eyes and ears, your voice speaking peace and love to a hurting world. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. Amen. Amen. We pray these things in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, singing. body of Christ broken for you. The grapes which are crushed to create the blood of Christ given for you. The body of Christ bread for the for journey. The journey.
blood of Christ. The cup, the cup of, of salvation. salvation. The cup, the cup of, of joy. joy. Let us pray. We give thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Jesus Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world united in courage and peace, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. We're now going to sing the last verse of our communion hymn. peace. Go forth knowing you're not ever alone. You are always wrapped firmly and lovingly in the grasp of the comforter, the spirit of truth that walks with you each and every day of your life's journey. May the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, and the Holy Spirit keep you this day and always. Amen.